bankers, lawyers and accountants. Three professions that are key to navigating modern life and people we like to believe we can trust with our most sensitive information. We turn to them to solve life's more complex problems, a relationship that often extends beyond the professional. Our first story tonight exposes what happens when that relationship breaks down. It's about a Pretoria accountant, a bookkeeper she subcontracted, and the clients she once called friends now alleging she pocketed their cash. It's also about a forensic investigator who claims to have joined the dots. Pretoria, Jacaranda City. It's home to many professionals and business people who want to keep their financial affairs tidy. And this is where the story of Renee Kruger and the missing millions begins. It's a saga of complex financial transactions around deceased estates, facilitated by a chartered accountant who relished holidays and the high life. For years, accountant Renee Kruger had been handling the books of professionals in Pretoria. Through many tax seasons, she had got to know them well, and they her. But recently, it had become clear to at least some of her clients that things were just not adding up. <laughs> Dr. Marius de Beer placed his family's finances with Rene Kruger's small business over 10 years ago. So when his mother passed away in 2018, it seemed sensible to appoint Rene as the executor of the estate, paying her to do the complicated paperwork required by law to shift his inheritance into his hands. The inheritance was in part earmarked for lifelong care for his seriously disabled son. That's a very special memory for us that uh, they were able to do that. They spent their lives very disciplined when it came to finances and spending and all that. However, Marius became uneasy because over months wrapping up the estate and he was continually fobbed off when he made inquiries. This is one of the correspondences that I had with Renee uh, regarding my mom's estate, where she basically tells me that, look, we have to be very patient. It takes long for SARS. And that was obviously just a delaying tactic. That was a delaying tactic, yeah. Then Renee told him SARS wanted him to pay a significant capital gains tax, which is a tax levied on the profit made from the disposal of an asset, like a property. So at that point, how much money was tied up in your mom's estate? roughly around 1.2 million. And um, it was, for me at the time, a very surrealistic moment when I heard that the capital gains tax that were charged by SARS apparently was also 1.2 million. Marius went personally to SARS to check because Rene's numbers didn't make sense to him, only to be told that he had to work through Rene as the executor. In this instance, the executor had exclusive control of the estate's bank accounts and financial affairs. Soon after, I got a phone call from a forensic investigator indicating that they were busy unearthing severe problems, especially regarding uh, trust money and also matters involving SARS and false audits and all sorts of things. So from that moment on, the whole thing just started to dawn upon me that there was a serious problem here. The forensic investigator, Hannes Willewachen, had been approached by some of Rene's anxious, angry clients. He's been trying to follow the money and the paper trails too, many of which lead to deceased estates. He opened a can of worms. I think one could say so, yes. When you get the mandate to do an investigation into a professional person like a chartered accountant, then you know you're going to have quite a battle because they know all the processes behind the scenes, how to do the paperwork, what the prosecutor is going to have to look to prove allegations of fraud or misappropriation. It's scary how much an accountant knows about their clients. They have their identity documents, their company records, the keys to their bank accounts. But most of all, they have their trust in the case of dentist Dr. Johan Klopper and his partner, Morne Lloyd, Rene Kruger had their friendship too. Rene was 
like a lifetime friend with me. Two, three times a day on the phone, best friends, we did hunting together, going on vacations together. Very, very close friend. Renee took on Johan's mother's estate after her death in 2021. But their friendship fell apart while on holiday together. And when Johan tried to remove Renee as the executor, he had a nasty surprise. What's this? This is the executor letter that been falsified. This is the one that we sent through to the master's office and they said to us, the number on that is not on the system. My mother's uh, estate haven't been even registered. With that suspicious executor's letter, Rene had withdrawn cash from the estate. Johan and Mornay suspect to fund their joint holiday over that 2021 Christmas. When they finally got the bank statements, they saw to their shock withdrawals of tens of thousands of rands for admin over the festive season. And they jumped to this conclusion. When we saw the bank statements, we could pinpoint all the transactions. This is the money that was spent on food and wine and drinks and booze. Um, this was the money that was spent on a hunting rifle as a Christmas gift for David van Jarsveld, her now fiancé. I think that is the thing that just angers a person more, you know, because this is somebody that you trusted. But there was another long-standing relationship that was to hit the rocks between Rene and her subcontractor, Jacqueline Pretorius. Now, Jacqueline cuts a lonely figure. She did bookkeeping work on client accounts, solving problems, handling complaints, even personally delivering files to clients' homes. In March this year, Renee Kruger dropped a bombshell via WhatsApp. She told the clients that she'd fired her bookkeeper, Jacqueline Pretorius, and laid a charge against her for stealing from deceased estates, but then assured them there was nothing to worry about. But this message did not comfort widow Vanda Blichnolt and her son. They were worried. René was executor of her late husband's estate. Francois Blichnolt had died 16 months earlier, and she had already paid René 180,000 rand. But there was allegedly nothing to show for it. So there was a high probability that my account was affected as well. So Vanda sought clarification on the payment she had made to Rene Kruger to settle her late husband's bond in 2022. Jacqueline promptly paid 114,000 rand to clear the loan a whole year later. But the remaining 80,000 rand is in dispute due to the lack of progress in winding up the estate. I did that myself too. I finally managed to get the TV license into my own name. His net bank account closed. Um, they didn't do any of it, yeah. After Rene refused to step down as executor, Vanda hired new lawyers. And in the papers, they found a mysterious rental statement. It states both mine and my husband's ID numbers, listing a number 105 Nicholson Street, Brooklyn and Pretoria, as property that we were renting from them. Um, and I had no idea of any of this. I didn't even know this property existed. We've come to 105 Nicholson Street in Brooklyn, Pretoria, and I can see Renee Kruger's name on the building. That means she's definitely had a presence here. Now, we're going to try and look for her. No, I don't think so. I think it's probably the other side. I'm looking for Renee Kruger accountants. Renee Kruger has gone to ground. And through a lawyer, she's refusing to do an interview with us. But she says she's hired a forensic investigator to do her own inquiry into her bookkeeper. Jacqueline Pretorius declined an interview with us, but claims that Renee forged her signature and identity on documents. She responded to us in writing, claiming that she had for the most part acted under the instructions of Renee Kruger as a subcontractor. She has her own interpretations of delays, events, 
and movements of cash. Jacqueline says she's handed information to investigators, and she alleges that Renee Kruger and her partner, David van Jarsveld, tried to bribe her to take the fall. When she refused, she says Renee threatened her. Johan and Mornay say they too received threats. After the animosity between the two couples had grown, Mornay received this phone call. Mornay, hello. Hello, Lois. How are you? Good, and you? The caller then asks Mornay why he's telling people that his client has a criminal record. What are you going to do to me? Tell me. Listen to me. I will make you disappear. You will make... I can hear you. Go ahead and open the case for me. I will f*** you up. I will f*** you up. I will destroy you. Mornay suspects that the mystery client is in fact Renee's partner, David van Jarsveld. So we phoned to ask him. The conversation quickly got heated. David, we've spoken to clients of Rene uh, who allege that Rene has stolen money from them. We, we've spoken to multiple people who allege Rene has stolen money for them. And those people say that once they fall out with Rene, you arrange for them to be threatened. You sitting next to people who's involved in child pornography. What is your problem, man? David, I'm calling from carte blanche. That was David van Jarsveld, partner of Rene Kruger. Denies that he threatens people and seems to be very upset by our questions. None of this explains the modus operandi of Rene Kruger chartered accountants, puzzling clients like Johan Klopper. Between the 23rd of December 2021 and the 4th of February 2022, Somebody made 15 withdrawals from the Klopper account. But in three consecutive days in March, roughly the same amount was put back after lawyers requested the bank statements. The biggest thing for me is the time when I had to mourn my mother's death. And even more now, he lost his mother and father both about three, four weeks after my mom also took COVID. And the time we had to mourn our parents' loss. We had to deal with this corruption and fraud. And the drama appears even more complex. Johan discovered that Rene had also stolen his identity and used it on her company papers. I've never signed anything. If you look at the IDs that she used, it's my ID, but not my photo. Two falsified uh, IDs that she used for the companies. My signature is fraudulent, everything. Johan and Mornay have laid a complaint against Renee Kruger at the South African Institute of Psyche. She's still, she, she's still advertising her services, despite the trail of despair she or her subcontractor left behind. Hannes Ullewachen is putting together a case one bank entry at a time, assisting officials with his forensic auditing skills. There are criminal cases opened that involves Rene Creer and Jacqueline Pretorius as suspects of allegations of fraud, and they are currently being investigated. He too is frustrated by the pace of the Psyche investigation. You know there's a problem when members of the general public start to contact you as a forensic investigator complaining to you, crying out for help. In 2019, Rene was ordered to pay over a million rands in fines and costs by the Independent Regulatory Board for Auditors, Erba, for improper conduct. Vanda says she found this out in the newspapers recently. From her perspective, Saika's ongoing investigation is too little too late. If the two bodies worked together and they both disbarred her, then I wouldn't have been in the position where I am now because she wouldn't have been able to continue practicing and I would have known about it. Marius is still struggling to remove Rene as the executor of his mother's estate. So he doesn't yet know exactly how much of his inheritance is accounted for. I was a Facebook friend of Rene. I recall very um, flamboyant pictures of deep sea fishing expeditions and big game hunting trips that I thought, yo, life is good. Eh? <laughs> It's only um, later that I realized, actually, that I think that probably we were sponsoring some of these trips, it may seem. 